Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan. This is Super Review and this is the Fio M11S. And you might be thinking to yourself right now, Mark Ryan, you already reviewed the Fio M11, but that was a different M11. I swear to you, okay? The, the, the M11 I reviewed already was the M11 Plus. This here is the M11S. And now you're wondering, okay, well, what's the difference? For starters, the main difference up front is that this is $500 versus the $700 M11 Plus, okay? So 500 bucks, still not cheap, but a $200 discount on that player, I'll take that for sure. Uh, this player is also like a little bit smaller if you hold them up side by side, but a lot of the features that I liked about the M11 Plus, specifically the Snapdragon 660 processor, which for a DAP is actually pretty fast, um, as well as uh, uh, the fact that it's got Android 10. Uh, these are a couple of things that are awesome in the file M11 Plus that are also here with the M11S. So uh, I've had this thing for about a month now, I've been daily driving, living with it, and really trying to figure out what's the catch. It's cheaper, it's smaller, which I think is actually better. It's got the same processor, it's got the same Android. So what's different? And for the past month, I've again, been living with this thing, trying to figure out exactly what that is. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So uh, like all my other reviews, this is a live stream. If you're here now in the live chat, how's it going? Happy Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday evening here in California. Um, if you have any questions about the M11, S plus whatever we talk about today, please do leave it in the live chat at the end of the review. I'm going to stick around and we're going to have a conversation. But uh, until then, I guess if you're interested in checking out the file M11S, I do have a link to file in the description down below. Shout out to them for sending this in for review. Uh, and with that out of the way, yeah, let's just dive to the table and start talking about the M11S. And uh, the my DAP reviews end up being a little bit on the long side. I apologize up front, but I, just to give you a sense of what we'll be talking about. First, we're going to talk about the build, the physical stuff, what I like, what I don't like. Then we'll get into talking about the functionality, battery life, the performance and stuff like that. Uh, and then I will talk about the sound. Now, I will warn you up front, when it comes to DAP reviews and just source reviews in general, I don't usually make a lot of differences with the sound, but there are a few things that are pretty important to me, and we're definitely going to talk about that. I'm also going to talk about how the M11S compares to a couple of other DAPs, and then finally, eventually, we'll get to a conclusion with a score, and um, well, that's what you're in for. So just up front, up, to, up the top of this review, I did want to talk a little bit more about how this thing is different from the M11 Plus, which is what this is, right? So this is the M11 Plus, this is the new M11S, as you can see it's a little bit smaller. So not only is the device itself smaller, the screen is smaller as well. Let's load that up so you can kind of take a look at that difference. Um, so it's a little bit smaller screen. Uh, other than that, like this thing has some higher end audio stuff in it, right? It's got THX amps. It's got a higher end ESS DAC in it. Um, there's okay so that's pretty minor and then maybe one other difference that i thought was noticeable was that the m11 plus has like this touch sensitive slidey volume thing that's not carried through over here i actually didn't really like that on the m11 plus i disabled it so certainly no sacrifice there but that's just like what's different on the surface so let's dig a little bit deeper and, and, and talk about this thing all right so for starters what comes inside the box the box is smaller and slimmer uh, and fewer accessories but i don't know it's about as much as you would expect so you do get a usb charging cable it goes usb a to usb c as you might expect like pretty much all modern devices this thing is usb c on the bottom uh, they did also include even for the the budget price they included a case now it's not as nice of a case as the one that comes with the m11 plus but this is perfectly serviceable and to be honest like i did actually use this i'm not usually a big fan of cases um but we'll talk a little bit more about why i found it useful here um and it does have cutouts for all of the buttons which i frankly appreciate um, makes it a little bit easier to access the buttons while you got the case on it uh, and it's also actually got a hole uh, it's not super visible for the memory card so you don't have to remove the case just to remove the memory card Okay, now let's talk about the hardware here on the device itself. So um, 
let's see, let's see. We'll, let's start with uh, the buttons, right? This is a pretty basic button configuration, but you've got your play button over here, track up, track down. And then on the opposite side of the player, you've got a, a power on and off. You've got your volume slider, and then you've got this, this bizarre mappable button that they had also on the M11 Plus, and I didn't really understand why it existed, and I still, to be honest, don't really get it. Like, it's customizable. There's some options in the software that you can change its function, but none of them seemed like anything I wanted to do. Like, you can map this button to delete the song you're listening to, or do some other stuff. I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe that's useful for some, for some other people. I personally did not find a use for it, but I don't know. You can also perfectly, you know, just disable it and not worry about it at all. Uh, what else in the buttons while we're, or just the hardware and stuff in general? I mean, down here you do have uh, all of your audio jacks. You've got 3.5 millimeter single-ended, and then you've got as well 2.5 millimeter and 4.4 millimeter balance connectors, just like you got on the Plus. So no sacrifice there. You still get all of the connectors that you could plausibly want. I guess you, you might want a 6.3 millimeter, but nobody puts those on DAPs which maybe is a little bit interesting. Uh, and then over here on the side, you've got your micro SD card slot. Just takes any regular micro SD card and it is not hidden behind a drawer. It is accessible um, right there. And I, I, I generally appreciate that. That said, it's actually pretty difficult to get that micro SD card slot out there by hand. Maybe if you had fingernails, you can see I cut my fingernails kind of short. I can't get that out, out by hand, even without a case. So I do need a little tool, um, but I don't know if you've, if you've got fingernails, maybe that won't be the same problem for you. Okay, so what are the things I like about the build quality here? First of all, just upfront file always, always does a really good job with materials and the M11S here is no exception. Uh, you do have an aluminum frame all around the side, so it feels nice and premium. You've got, of course, a nice glass front, but of course, uh, as well, you've got a glass back. So it definitely feels nice in the hand, like it's got a hefty weight to it, does not feel like a cheap device. Um, I do like that the hardware or the, the audio connectors are on the bottom. Some players will put them on the top and that's fine, I suppose, but I definitely prefer them to be on the bottom. Um, and then the buttons are generally pretty easy to access. Like I appreciate that they've got the volume, or sorry, the, the, the playback controls separate from the volume controls. It just makes it, if there's like, 10 buttons over here, it can make it a little bit difficult to navigate, but being able to, to separate those and that these are um, the, the volume slider specifically is very different, makes it very easy to, to operate this thing by hand. Uh, the one quibble I will bring up here is I do think these buttons are a little bit too flush against the body. I don't know if I can get a good angle on that with the light, but they really don't stand out very much. Uh, what helps them is the fact that, again, like I mentioned, they're, the, the buttons are split between the right and the left side pretty easily. So there's only so many buttons to worry about. And there is this little nubbin on the middle play button, which actually makes it plenty easy to, to navigate around blind without having to look at the buttons. And that's kind of one of the big reasons I like to have a DAP is to have buttons. Um, and I would found that these were actually pretty, pretty operable even with the case. The screen, I would also say, is a nice, very nice screen. Maybe not quite as clean of color as the, the screen on the M11 Plus, but uh, it's really nitpicking, to be honest. Uh, generally, a very good screen with a slight green tint, but that also might just be unit variation, as tends to be with these sorts of things. So that's what I like about the build quality. Uh, what I don't love about it, I don't know, aesthetically, I still don't really love Fio's look. It just feels a little bit random, like it's asymmetrical, which, I don't know, it's a look for some people, but I like a, I prefer a symmetrical look. And then you've got this carbon fiber detail, which feels a little bit random. I don't know, it's just quibbles. I, I think it's generally a decent looking player, but it's not my favorite aesthetic on a, on a DAP. Uh, and then we're talking about the back of this thing being glass. It is a nice premium feeling material, but if I'd be perfectly honest, it's not totally necessary for this to be uh, glass in the back. And that has a couple of issues. One, you can see this thing's already got fingerprints. And I swear to God, I, I wiped this thing down before I pulled this, or before I even started this review. So uh, those are all fresh. That's not the one I wanted to show you. Those are all fresh fingerprints. Um, so uh, there's that. But then I think the bigger issue that I have with the glass in the back in general is that it just makes the player a little bit slick. 
um, especially if you put it on a soft surface, like a couch or something like that. This is very common with a lot of digital audio players. I don't know why they do it, but that's actually, I mentioned uh, why I use the case is because it does give this thing a little bit of extra grip either in my hand, which is, you know, it's heavy and a little bit bulky. So it's nice to have that added grip and not have it be slippery or, or just sitting on, you know, something like a couch or a bed or anything else that's, that's soft. Um, so there you go. And then my last quibble about the physical stuff is that it is just a little bit chonk. It's a little bit on the big side. Uh, it is smaller than the M11S, like I like we kind of demonstrated, but it's still pretty beefy if I'm perfectly honest, and also a little bit on the heavy side. So that's the physical stuff. Um, let's dive into talking about the functionality now here. And I've got this broken up into battery performance and then some quibbles about like the, the software experience. So the battery on this thing, a 5,300 milliamp hour battery, which is pretty large when it comes to digital audio players. They claim just 14 hours of playback, and I think that is on single-ended. You can expect to get lower battery life if you're using a balance connector. And 14 hours, to be honest, is like, I get a very solid like two days between charges on this thing, but 14 hours is not a ton. Uh, I would say that the battery average on this thing is is kind of, or sorry, the battery life in this thing is kind of average at this point. Um, it's uh, 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 it's not as bad as some players, like the Sony NWA105 really has a hard time, especially with standby battery life. This doesn't really have that issue. Um, but I'm a little bit spoiled, I'll, I'll admit at this point, having used the Hibby R5 Gen 2, which has got 30 plus hours of battery life in an Android player, I, that's, that's frankly, that's pretty attractive, but, uh, you know, the 14 hours here again, I'm getting, I'm getting like a good two days between charges, which is not too bad. Um, and then the other aspect of battery life is not just like how many hours in a row can it play, but what's the, the drain when it's just sitting there in standby. And I would say it's pretty average here. Maybe actually a little bit of a disappointment, just given how good the battery drain on the M11 plus is like, there's like that thing can just go weeks without being plugged in and somehow maintain its battery. This thing I would say performs average, which is fine. Um, but again, maybe a little bit of a disappointment given that comparison. Now in terms of performance, like I said up top, this thing is using the Snapdragon 660, which is a bunch of goofy names and numbers. It might not mean that much to you, but when it comes to digital audio players, look, they just, they're not putting a lot of high-end processors in these things, right? This is running Android and it is running Android 10. Uh, and you might be thinking that it's somehow comparable to a modern smartphone, but really even like budget modern smartphones are probably gonna have faster processors than any digital audio player. That said, the Snapdragon 660 that they put in here, I actually find to be very, very good, um, especially for a DAP, right? The main thing where you're gonna notice that performance boost is when you're using apps that are not the stock app. Generally, my experience is that digital audio, other Android DAPs with lesser processors generally will perform fine enough if you're using the stock app, but once you switch to like a streaming app, whether it's Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music, whatever, that's where the, the processor really becomes a bottleneck. And I find that the Snapdragon 660 here is actually at a level where it's sufficient that I don't, I don't mind that it's, that I'm using streaming software on this thing. Like it feels, I don't know if it's as good as your, as a modern smartphone, um, but it's not like obviously uh, uh, deficient in that sense. So generally very good with streaming apps in terms of performance. I guess I should actually demonstrate that. So here I'll load uh, YouTube music to give you a sense. And this is from a fresh load. And you can see that, you know, the general scrolling performance is actually pretty, pretty stinking decent on this thing. Uh, and now you're getting a sense of what I'm listening to. There we go, Magdalena Bay, as was hinted at in the screenshot. And as you can see, uh, performance, scroll performance on this thing is actually pretty decent. So that's with YouTube music. Um, what else can I say about it? Um, I guess we'll get into a little, a little bit of quibbles in terms of the, the performance or just the general experience. One of them that I had is actually probably my biggest gripe with this issue, with this player. And it's fairly small, but 
I don't know. It feels like the sort of thing, frankly, that will be fixed with a software update. And I've kind of been waiting for a, a software update to come with this thing because I do have it early, but I don't know, this thing's available now. It's been, it's been weeks and there hasn't been a software update yet, but I, I still expect it will come. The issue is that uh, sometimes the play pause button doesn't wake the device, okay? So if I'm playing music, I pause, and then I have the screen turned off. And then I come back to the player and I just hit the play button without turning the screen back on. It doesn't always reliably start playing music. I usually or frequently will have to turn the screen on and then there's just like this kind of weird hiccup issue and then it will begin playing. So um, that's a little bit of a bummer. Um, but otherwise, I don't know, let's talk a little bit about this stock app. I won't do a full tour of it because frankly, there's a lot of features in here that I just don't use. Um, I Generally, the way I use a digital audio player is I load it up with my own music library and I just listen to albums. That's pretty much how I use a player. Um, all of these dApps, whether it comes from File, Hibby, Ibeso, Shanling, they all come with like their own stock software and that's what I'll be talking about here, right? This is the stock File app. Um, and as far as stock apps go, I did this in a previous video where I ranked uh, the stock Android software of a bunch of different players. I ranked them, Sony Walkman was my favorite, Hibby was probably my second favorite, Fio third favorite, and then Shanling, and then Ibeso. So Fio's software experience, I would say fits nice and in the middle. Um, generally don't have many complaints about it in terms of aesthetics and organizations. It's it's pretty basic, right? So you've got your list of artists, or at least this is how I tend to navigate my stuff. You click into an artist, you've got a list of albums, uh, you click into your list of albums and you've got a list of songs. That's not too uh, uh, surprising there. Some things that I do like about what they do, um, for example, right? This is a very small but significant thing for me. Uh, artists that start with the word the, they get organized under the first letter of the word that's not the, and I don't know, I find that really annoying when uh, the cure ends up under T. So I do like that. And then just generally like the, um, the organization makes sense. Uh, we'll get into a few quibbles here though. Um, so for starters, you can, as you can see, uh, I can play all songs by Cigarettes After Six, right? I can play all songs by a given artist, which I appreciate. But what I can't do, at least I have no idea how to do it, is I can't just listen from one album to the next and loop Cigarettes After Six, which is frankly something I like to do. Uh, if, I, if I hit the play all button, it's basically going to play them in this order, which is alphabetical order. And that's not like, that's not how that's not how the albums are. Uh, what I would love to see is the songs in order of the album that they're on, uh, and then the albums ordered sequentially, whether alphabetically or, or, or by release year. I'm not too picky about that, but basically I just wanna listen to all of the albums by a given artist in order. Uh, the file app doesn't let you do that, unfortunately. Now, you can, of course, load your own software on this. And to be honest, most of my time listening with this player, I actually use PowerAmp. But we're talking about the stock art or the stock app. So I'll continue with my with my quibbles. Um, another one, I actually think that now this is fairly minor, um, but the, the the music scanning, right? So this is a, a, a process that you will do every once in a while when you load new music on this thing, scan for music. It's generally pretty fast. I'm gonna hit this, uh, hopefully we're not sitting here watching this forever. It's generally pretty fast at scanning the music. Um, some players do it better than others. Let's see, oh my gosh, this is actually not going as fast as I expected. Um, the, uh, the, the, the thing that I was gonna point out though that kind of annoys me about it is that uh, if the player goes to sleep while it's scanning the music, it will interrupt the scan. All right, so that was actually a decent scan. That It looked like nothing was happening because it's only looking for new songs and this, this player has about 4,000 songs on it. So of the 4,000 songs, it just scanned them all and only found 19 new ones. So that's actually that was actually pretty quick to scan a, 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 four, a 4,000 track library. But again, the, the, the quibble that I have here is that if that was taking longer, and it usually will in like your initial scan, uh, if the device falls asleep, it pauses that scan and, and it's just, I don't know, 
they should be able to figure that out. Um, the other quibble that I will, and this is probably the bigger issue that I think more people are gonna run into, is that you can see we've got the, the album arts loaded in here. And as I'm scrolling the list, you can see that it has like a, uh, a placeholder album art for, for these things. And when I release the scroll, they load into view, but I, I find it annoying that I have to release touching the screen for them to load, right? A lot of times, this is kind of how I scan my music, is I'll scan through the folders like that. And I I like to visually scan. So I think I recognize the album arts. Those will cause me to stop maybe more than seeing the letters. But unfortunately, with the way that this thing loads the album arts, you can see it's definitely not a speed thing because as soon as I release, it's very quick about loading those album arts. But the way I tend to scroll is like this. And because of that, it, it, it just ends up not loading the album arts. So, Small quibble, and again, you can run your own software. Again, I ran PowerAmp. PowerAmp doesn't have these issues. And in fact, if you're curious how PowerAmp runs on this player, let's launch it. You're now looking at PowerAmp. Um, and you can see that if I'm doing that same that same scroll motion, see how much more quickly it loads them. I'm not having to release my finger. And then it also keeps them in memory so that ones that I've already loaded are not reloading. So. That's just kind of an example of what I think is a better experience versus the stock app. Okay, that was a lot about the hardware, a lot about the battery life, the experience. Let's talk about the sound. And like I said up front, like I, I generally just do not talk a lot about the differences in terms of like details and, and, and sound stage and tonal balance because my honest opinion is that most DAPs sound just about identical. Sometimes there are differences that if I'm in an AB scenario, I can pick up like some slight difference, but almost always it's at the level of, I'm not even sure that I hear it for real. I might be tricking myself. And it's absolutely for sure the case that if I'm not listening to it in an AB scenario, like I, I just don't hear it. But there are some things that I do like to listen for. So let's talk about those things, okay? For starters, right, the, some of the obvious things, volume, how much volume can you get out of a player? That's a very real sound difference that you're gonna hear between them. And this thing, you're gonna get plenty of volume out of it. Now, the, the, the power rating on this heavily favors the balanced outputs. If you don't use balanced outputs, you'll still get 200 milliwatts of power at 32 ohms, to be honest. Like, I think that's enough for even a Sennheiser HD 600. But if you do need more juice, you can get up to 670 milliwatts of power on the balance connector. And frankly, that's a lot. That's a lot for a digital audio player to get 670 milliwatts. I will say I did not test blasting my ears off with that much volume, but um, I don't have any headphones that this thing wouldn't fully run. Um, obviously, it does well with, uh, uh, or it has plenty of power to run both all my full-size headphones as well as, of course, my IEMs. And on the topic of IEMs, a lot of the times the trade-off for having a lot of power is with sensitive IEMs, you get a lot of hiss. But that's not the case at all here with the M11 hiss. In fact, I, I now have a, a, a Campfire Audio Aura, which is the most sensitive IEM in my library. It picks up hiss on devices that I even thought didn't have hiss before. Um, on this, I, the faintest of hiss. Like there's basically zero noise floor here on the M11S significantly fainter than the, the Hibby R5 Sabre that I compared it to. Really pretty impressive. Um, and again, that was on my absolute max, most sensitive earphone that I've got. Using my usual earphone test, which is the Mago CK5, I didn't detect any hiss here on this device, whether that was on 3.5 millimeter or the balance connector. So very, very impressive there. Uh, another thing that I like to listen for in terms of sound is like, output impedance, is it causing a tonal shift? Um, if the output on this thing has a, a high impedance rating, you will notice that. That'll actually make tonal differences in your earphones and depending on which earphone you're using. I, the one I like to test with, again, the MAGA OCK5, it's very, it's all balanced armatures. It's very obviously affected by um, high output impedance. And on here, on this player, as I expected, to be honest, zero issues with it, right? Zero tonal balance shifts with it. And the, the last thing that I like to test for, especially with these Android digital audio players is digital interference, okay? This is a thing I, I didn't really experience 
in heavily until I used, what was it? The, the Ibeso DX160 um, that, I, that I had on loan and reviewed last year. A lot of these digital audio players, if you're listening carefully, and usually you do have to listen carefully, you can actually hear digital interference coming through the headphone connector um, from a couple of things. So uh, the Wi-Fi radios in these things can generate that sort of digital interference, or even just the processors running quite quickly. So especially if you're using like streaming software, you're going to run into both of those. You're, you'll be taxing the Wi-Fi and, and the processor. So. I spent a lot of time listening to this thing and I tested the way that I stress tested this was two ways. Now, one to test the Wi-Fi interference is I just ran a speed test on this thing. So this thing's running at max capacity with the Wi-Fi and I, that's how I test it. And then to test the processor interference, I run Geekbench, which is just a benchmarking tool that again, taxes the processors. And what I do is I listen to a track that this thing plays that I have on this thing that just is noise floor. That's all. The track is zero noise. That's like the point of it. Hold on, let me pull it up just so uh, I don't sound totally insane. Although I probably sound totally insane. Where do I have this track? Uh, da -da, it's under my test audio sounds. Here we go. I have this track called Sound Floor, okay? And it is silence. Like that's, that's the point of it is that I want to hear silence. Uh, and when I was doing those stress tests, I heard exactly science. I, I heard zero, literally zero interference from um, either the Wi-Fi or the processor. So uh, really pretty impressive there as well. So again, we're talking about the sound stuff, power output in this thing, excellent. Hiss performance, excellent. Uh, output impedance performance, very good. Interference or interference from the, the, the processors and Wi-Fi, zero. So um, generally no complaints here with the sound on the M11S. Okay, so I think that's gonna about do it for my thoughts here on the M11S, but like I mentioned up top, I'm gonna talk about this thing in context of some other players. So uh, let's let's make some comparisons, all right? Move this stuff to the side. And we'll talk about how the M11S compares with the Fio M11 Plus, which we talked a little bit about already, as well as the Hibi R5 Gen 2. And I will be perfectly frank with you, I don't have the R5 Gen 2 here in this, in this case, but I do have the R5 Gen 2. It's just not here at this moment. Uh, so um, use your imagination, but I will tell you about the differences between them. So upfront, pricing. Move you into perfect view. Okay, pricing. Okay, like I mentioned uh, upfront, the M11S, 500 bucks. The M11 Plus, 700 bucks. And the Hibi R5 Gen 2, I think is 450 bucks. In terms of form factor differences, uh, as you can see, the M11S is a little bit smaller than the M11 Plus. It is pretty much only smaller though in the vertical aspect, right? They're, they're about almost identical in terms of thickness and width. In fact, if I put this in that case, it feels like it fits. Um, so it is a little bit smaller, but they're both Frank, frankly, pretty chonkers. Um, they're both asymmetrical, uh, um, and they both have kind of like the same the same unpronounced buttons. But frankly, they both feel I would say nice and high quality. Here, are the Hippie R5 Gen 2. Again, use your imagination. Um, it, this is actually the more compact player of the bunch. Uh, use your imagination. Um, it's slimmer, and I would say like. Screen wise, it's a little bit smaller here than the M11S, but roughly the same size. But the overall player just feels a lot smaller, slimmer, more compact. Um, in my opinion, it feels better in the hand. And I do think the, the button feel on the R5 Gen 2 is better than either of the Fios. Um, the other thing that I will say, or the one the one demerit I will give the Hibi versus the Fios is that the screen on the Hibi is dimmer versus these others. Not that it matters for me most of the time when I'm indoors, but if you're using it outdoors, that might play into uh, your ability to see them. Uh, in terms of functionality, all right, the M11S, it's got that snappy Snapdragon 660, so very good performance, pretty decent battery life, about 14 hours. And then the max power output on this thing, again, 670 milliwatts of power. The M11S, um, also has that same snappy performance because it's using the same processor and the same Android 10. 
battery life playback is about the same in terms of like just hours played. It's about 14 or 15 hours on the plus, but the standby battery life is really what's pretty stand out here. I'm not sure why it's so much different here than it is there, but it is. Um, and I do like that quite a bit. Um, and then I, in terms of sound, you know, I mentioned at the top, this thing uses THX AAA amps as well as like a higher end uh, ESS DAC. And I gotta say, if I'm listening to them in an AB scenario, I do feel like I can hear that this sounds better to me, but it's so minor that I never miss it, okay? I'll be perfectly honest with you. I, I really just do not miss it. But if I'm listening with a really careful ear, uh, it does it does sound a little bit better to me. Um, and then here with the Hibby R5 Gen 2, this has got the weaker processor of the bunch. It's like a Snapdragon 425 with the stock app or even power amp performance is actually pretty excellent but if you use a streaming app that's where the difference is going to be really really obvious and that the performance will not be as good on the r5 gen 2. um the, the the counterpoint is that the battery life is by far the best here on the r5 gen 2. you get like 35 hours of playback on an android player which is frankly unreal and i love that about it um, it does have this gimmick as well called the class a amplifier you can switch into that that class a mode the battery life on class a definitely drops down but the power output goes up and with the class a amp the max power output that you can get on this player is 564 milliwatts so i think i forgot to mention the max power on this so, so it's 670 660 milliwatts so this is actually more powerful technically um, and then this is uh, 564 milliwatts of power just to give you a sense. Again, I find all of them are plenty powerful to run anything that I own, but maybe you own something that requires a lot of power in which case that difference might actually matter for you. So I think that's gonna do it for my thoughts here on the file M11S. So again, as we were kind of talking about up front, it's like the M11 Plus, but 200 bucks cheaper, same processor, same Android 10. And maybe it gives up a couple of like things on paper, but in reality, my living experience with this thing was basically just like living with the M11 Plus. So out of five stars, I'm gonna give the M11S a very, very solid four stars out of five. My only quibbles that remain with this player, um, and I gotta be picky about everything. Actually, in, in retrospect, I've, I've looked at my past reviews, I've never given five stars to a digital audio player. So keep that in mind. Um, but my, my quibbles that I still have with this player would be like the battery life, 15, 14 hours of playback, it's decent, but I'm a little bit spoiled by the Hibby. Uh, and then just like the physical size stuff, it's still pretty chonkers and that's not my favorite. But if you are looking for a digital audio player specifically to use for streaming, 500 bucks is not cheap, but I do think that this is, of the players I've used, the best option. Uh, if streaming is not a priority for you, I think you should also take a look and consider the, the Hibby R5 Gen 2. Um, but again, streaming is your, your preference. I would very seriously consider the upgraded processor that you get here on the file. Okay, uh, if you are interested in checking out the file or yeah, just the file, uh, I do have a link to it in the description down below. And if you found this video helpful, while you're down there digging for that link, please do hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, uh, and join the Discord server. I do have that linked in the description as well. I spend way too much time there chatting on Discord with a bunch of really cool people. Would love to have you there. But otherwise, um, do all that stuff. I'll catch you on the next Super Review, unless you're here live, in which case, hang out. I'm going to drink some water, and we'll have a little bit of a chat.